Previously we designed a spinning top. Now it's time to make it using Kirimoto. Last time I used Kirimoto, the free cloud slicer, we used it for FDM printing to create our G-code. In this video, we're going to use it again, except we're going to use it to create G-code for a CNC router. Let's get started. We previously made the spinning top and fidget spinner, and today the spinning top is going to be the focus of our CNC milling. Let's enter the sketch and spin the camera to show how this is going to work. The cutter I'm going to use is 3.175 mils. So I'm quickly going to dimension that. I'm going to leave it floating without any other constraints because I want to be able to simulate what's going to happen. As the cutter moves around the outside of the object, it will be able to access everything and cut the circle perfectly. Same as this internal hole here where the pencil goes. There will be something slightly unexpected however when it gets to these internal parts. As it gets into the corner, the cutter will be unable to make the sharp point because as you can see it is round. That means that we can simulate how it's going to look by adding a fillet to one of the internal corners. We click the fillet button and then the two lines that make it up and finally we type in our radius. If I move this dimension out of the way for clarity and then drag this in you can see that the two shapes match and as it goes around on any of these internal points it's going to leave a rounded surface like that. I'm quickly going to add some more holes here just to show that they need to be bigger than the cutter size. We've added two new holes here and if we move our pretend cutter around we'll see that this large one will be able to get inside and cut great. However this smaller one is smaller than the cutter. The cutter can't possibly fit inside this hole to cut it out. Therefore when we try and process the g-code for the spinning top this small hole will simply be ignored. Let's test that. Now that our geometry is updated it's time to switch to Kirimoto. We're going to click import and then select our spinning top from the list. The first thing we need to do for CNC routing or milling is to put it in CNC milling mode. After that we need to set up our device. You can see I've already set up my CNC router here. Let me show you how I did it. I start by clicking on something that's closest to the settings that I want and then hitting the plus button. For most 6040 CNCs the usable width and height is about 450 by 350. Even though the bed's bigger than this, any time the cutter moves right over to the side, the gantry collides before the cutter has a chance to reach the edge. The max spindle RPM for most Chinese routers is 24,000 RPM. We like to leave origin center and top ticked, and we don't touch any of the things down below. After that, we can save and close. Compared to the 3D printing function, we have another thing to set up, and that is the tools. You can see here I've set up a number of tools. They're fairly straightforward. For this job we're going to be using a 3.175 end mill which I've set up previously. All you need to do is tell it whether it's a flat end or a ball mill. Give it a name. The number doesn't matter unless you're using a machine with the tool changing. Tick metric. Put in the diameter and length for the flute and the shaft. The flute of course is the cutting edge and the shaft is the smooth edge beyond that. Click save and then done. Now we can turn our attention to the right hand side. We won't need roughing for this job, but basically roughing removes a lot of excess material from a really large job. Imagine starting with a big block of timber and removing 90% of the waste material so you can then come back and do a really fine and accurate job to finish off the piece. I'm going to untick enable for that. For finishing I'll set my desired cutter. The spindle RPM will be loaded by default. There are four options here. For this job all we need to do is trace the outline, therefore we'll stick to simply having waterline ticked. The feed rate and the plunge rate are for you to experiment with based on your own machine. It's good to be conservative if you're unsure, otherwise you will snap cutters. The only parameter that affects waterline here is the step down, which will set to 1. As the job is 3 mils thick, it'll go down in 3 passes. Drilling we won't be using here, so we'll leave it unticked. Cutout tabs we also won't be using, but we do need to change some things in our output. The Z bottom needs to go to 0. This option can be handy if you're cutting out a foam and you don't want it to cut the whole way through because you simply want to snap it out of the block at the end. Ticking pocket only will make it so it only cuts out the interior shapes and not the external perimeter, but we want that to stay. We will however tick depth first, because that means it'll cut out the inside before it cuts out the outside. 
If it was to cut out the outside first, this whole piece of acrylic would be loose and then when the cutter came down to touch it, it would probably fly across the room. We're going to leave our stock at 000 and our origin center and top ticked. We're ready now to hit the slice button. You can see, as expected, Kirimoto has come up with three tool paths to take us down to the base to completely cut it out. If we click preview, we can get the travel moves as well. Like with FDM printing, dragging the slider down the bottom will tell us the order in which it's going to cut. We can see that it's going to cut the center hole first, then the outside holes, then the large cutouts, and then the external. As we predicted, because this hole is too small, the program simply won't cut it because it's impossible. This toolpath looks like exactly what we want, so let's hit export and send it to the machine. We told Kirimoto we wanted the starting point to be the top center, so we move the cutter to there, zero the machine, and we're ready to hit go. As our preview suggested, it starts with the very center hole and then uses three passes per segment to do the outer holes. Next are the large four present segments that go around the outside of the spinning top. Again, three passes is used for each one to get down to the bottom. Finally, the cutter circles around the outside of the spinning top three times to cut out the perimeter. It seems like it's going slower, but it's not. There's just more ground to cover. After only a minute or so, the piece is finished. Let's have a look how it turned out. Next is the super satisfying job of peeling off the protective film. This removes 90% of the defects, leaving the final product really, really nice. To get it working nicely, the idea was to put in as short a pencil as possible with the disc as low down as possible. Because of the way we designed our pattern, everything is perfectly balanced and it spins for days. Now I have paid licenses for Desk Proto and Meshcam, so the question is, would I use Kirimoto? The answer is yes, I already do and I use it all of the time. For cutting simple profiles like this, it's by far the fastest way to get my workflow done efficiently. There is a lot more that Kirimoto can do that I haven't shown in this video, but the truth is there are a lot of limitations. The biggest one is that you can't set the origin anywhere else besides the corner of the bed or the center of your job. If you've got something complicated where you need to start it precisely in the right place, this isn't for you. If you have a complex job, you're simply going to have to spend the money to use a paid cam slicer. But for everything else, I say Kirimoto is great. In a future video, we're going to use Kirimoto in its last mode to laser cut. See you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.